Mm. 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 <laughs> that was a blistering and masterful takedown that has now become, as I'm sure you can imagine, a viral sensation by Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. This occurred during the House Republican impeachment inquiry into President Biden's son, Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings, where Crockett called out Republicans for showing up with no direct evidence to support their allegations against the president, while also ignoring the mountain of evidence and charges against former President Donald Trump. Congresswoman Crockett joins me now. Uh, I have to just start with the notion of, uh, there's a couple of things, ma'am, ma'am, Madam Congresswoman, you are a freshman <laughs> member who walked up into those people's impeachment inquiry and did all of that. I, uh, number one, kudos to you for representing your constituents yeah. as best you can in doing that, not necessarily for the likes or for going viral, but because it's what you were convicted to do, I would imagine. What are you hearing from your constituents in the wake of, because you're in Texas, which is a red state, but you're in a blue district. so. What, what are you hearing from your constituents genu generally about not that moment, but the notion of Republicans impeachment inquiry into the president? Um, so I don't really think that my constituency was really paying that much attention to the impeachment in and of itself. This was more like red meat that the Republicans was trying to, you know, make sure that they could distribute to their um, followers, but I can tell you that my constituents are well aware of my advocacy now. Um, and they have been off the chain excited, um, and they've been and and not necessarily about the word itself because I've had a number of preachers that have reached out uh, and said something to me. But they have been excited about my passion, and it's a passion that I bring to this committee every single day. It's a passion that I bring to this job in general. You know, I'm not here to play games. The reality is that we have people that are struggling and suffering in this country, and then we have people that want to pander and pretend that they are the ones that are going to look out for the economic well-being of this country, while at the same time doing something that is completely opposite of what it is that they're saying. And so, yeah, I was frustrated. And honestly, I think the majority of the Americans that have reached out and have been excited about this moment, they were more so excited because they felt the same type of frustration as they watch our country falling apart. And they were happy to see that someone is actually sitting in a position of power display that same level of passion. Now, before you were an elected official, you were a civil rights attorney and a public defender. I, I like to take my glasses off when I talk to lawyers so we could just keep it straight and be eye to eye. Um, you did something that I thought was very interesting in your remarks. You juxtaposed this conversation and this inquiry around Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, the president, and what may or may not be there in terms of evidence against hard evidence that we've seen from the DOJ and Donald Trump and his prosecutions around Mar-a-Lago and the documents case. Why did you choose to do it that way? And what was the significance for sort of putting those two things in contrast together at the impeachment hearing? Yeah, so the entire time that I've been sitting on oversight, we have continually pointed out hypocrisy. And this was me calling them hypocrites without calling them hypocrites, right? And so instead of saying, y'all are just hypocrites, I decided to show what the hypocrisy looks like. The idea that um, there's all this evidence against the president, yet they had very rarely mentioned the president's name in this inquiry. Um, they did not bring any fact witnesses. Um, and the witnesses that they did bring didn't think that the evidence that they had heard or the lack thereof um, leading up to this hearing, they didn't think that they even had enough. Your own witnesses. So it's like, why are we wasting our time as the clock is counting down? This is when Kevin McCarthy should have been reaching across the aisle. We shouldn't have been waiting to the last hour as people were struggling. If you say that you care about border security, you say you care about national security, you say a lot of things. And that is what I need the American people to understand, is that the Republicans talk the best game that is... I mean, they are like... They are definitely like the masters of the con, right? And and they talk it and they talk it. And at the end of the day, they never, ever deliver. And that is the exact same thing in this. And the fact that they continually ignore the 91 indictments that are pinning against the former president, and they continue to say that there's nothing to see here when we could all see with our eyes 
if for some reason we believe that national security and national secrets are a problematic thing and he somehow was in possession of those items, it's a bigger issue than the, the president having a drug addicted son who maybe had fishy uh, dealings of some sort. But honestly, he's not even been charged for any of his business dealings at this point either. So, I mean, the, the leaps that they will jump through and the hoops that they will jump through just to try to impeach our president is, is laughable. And unfortunately for them, an impeachment is not a laughable situation. So if they decide that they want to continue to go down this road, I need them to understand that we will be ready and we will be clapping back. We'll be clapping back indeed, and we will be watching. That was Texas Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. Thank you for getting up and spending Sunday with us on Velshi. There was one group of far-right Republicans who went out of their way to try and force a shutdown of the government, and they weren't taking their direction from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The MAGA right wing likely had their de facto leader in mind. We'll talk more about this on the other side of this break. Stay tuned for more Velshi on MSNBC. I'm Charles Coleman Jr.